South Australia has a rich history of producing champions in all fields, from Aussie rules to cricket to tennis and, of course, horse racing. And the Barossa Valley, as well as being home to some of our greatest wines, is also the birthplace of champions of both the equine and human variety. Colin Hay's famous Lindsay Park stud is now divided into his grandson Sam Hay's cornerstone stud, Golden Farms, who will feature on next week's Bread to Win, and the hugely successful training complex of Tony McAvoy, Kildalton Park. So when Cornerstone held its recent stallion parade, the hugely patriotic South Aussie breeders turned out in droves. Well, Sam, thanks again for supporting Bread to Win and having us here at the, the Parade Day. It's an exciting time, isn't it, heading into spring for Cornerstone? Absolutely, and we've um, decided this year to have our parade a little bit earlier, so we're having it in July, so we're risking the weather a bit, but um, we just sort of gives breeders a bit more time to make up their decisions and see the stallions, so um, it should be a great day. So Dance a Lot has now moved through to Head Tabarax. Looking at you know some of the, the stallions, what they've achieved from Cornerstone in the last few years, Touching on Sir Prancelot, first of all, I mean, he still continues to get these group winners around the place. He's had Sir Dancelot, we know, win the Criterion Stakes, and that was just after running against Merchant Navy in the Diamond Jubilee, and Madame Dancelot, Beau Recall, group two winners on turf in the US. So he's getting winners right around the world. Yeah, that's right, and Madame Dancelot very nearly won a group one recently in uh, California as well. And Sir Dancelot backed up and ran in the July Cup. He ran a really nice fourth there. Um, Ginger Nut um, won a $250,000 two-year-old race two weekends ago. So, yeah, it's great. Like every, pretty well every uh, morning we wake up and there's another winner by Sir Prancelot or Zebedee. So, um, whilst of course they've got to prove themselves here in Australia, um, it's really, really encouraging how many winners they can produce. Yeah, indeed, and Zebedee as well. I mean, he's, he just does such a great job. Buena Sera, a stakes winner in Italy. Interestingly, a Daniel Line mare, of course, by Oratorio, the, the dam of Buena Sera. And, and a couple of months ago, had 10 winners in 10 days. So he's doing a fabulous job worldwide too. Yeah, he's still averaging 32-year-old winners a year, Zebedee. Um, and of course, the Prancelot managed to achieve that same feat in his first season as well. So they were both champion first season size by winners and, and Sir Prancelot by prize money as well. Um, and Sir Prancelot's still right up there with Nathaniel and uh, not far off Frankel in the third season size list. So he's had nearly uh, 42, 43 um, three, uh, winners this season already, um, which places him right in the top echelon of stallions. And he's an outcross. Um, so like you mentioned Dane Hill earlier with Zebedee, um, Sir Prancelot's totally free of Dane Hill mm -hmm. and he loves Dane Hill um, and we know Invincible Spirit, Zebedee Sireline works in Australia too. So they're two horses that um, we're really excited about and of course Zebedee's had his first yearling sell and the trainers loved them. Probably selling Zebedee yearlings this year was one of our easiest jobs. So um, they averaged 62,000 and uh, were really well received so we're excited. And you're getting the, the great support. I mean, South Australians are very patriotic about their state, aren't they? But you're getting some excellent breeders with some of the best mares in the state and from interstate as well coming to these stallions. Yeah, we're very fortunate. We've got a, a really nice, loyal client base, uh, some of which we've been dealing with for three generations now. Yeah. So, um, but we've also got a really good support from, from Victoria, especially, and we get mares come from all around Australia, New South Wales, Western Australia. You know, when Mill Park and those, you know, they're some of the best breeders in the country um, are sending mares to you, uh, they're supporting Zebedee fourth season, which when Mill Park backs a horse in his fourth season, I think we should all stop and listen. Yeah, without doubt, that's for sure. And look, I just love Valencia. These sons of Fast Net Rock, we know he was a, a very expensive $1.35 million yearling, won the Skyline Stakes, but you know, getting over 90 mares in his first season and his weanlings are selling well too. Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're really excited about his foals and I guess um, type produces type. So he was, a, as you say, a $1.35 million yearling and our hope was to get that really good, tough, strong looking uh, Aussie sort of product and we've got it and uh, you know they sold up to 55,000 on the Gold Coast, we sold one for 55, one for 40, uh, we had some great judges buying them, um, you know it was great to see Coolmore supporting a horse that 
they had raced um, and uh, kindly sold to us. So um, that was great. They bought two. Uh, and Paula Lodge, probably, I think, sort of some of the best pinhookers in the country, buying them as well. Um, so it was great. We've got a lot of young horses with, with progeny coming through now, and we're just in that exciting period of, of looking forward to seeing them, you know, get up and grow and become racehorses. Module 8, given a dig now by Gat Led, Embassy Lil, the outside. And I guess if you want a runner, Ambi Dexter, I just love commands and, you know, we know what a great record he had as a sire, particularly of non-stop winners and some very good stakes winners too. But he's just a valued horse, isn't he? And he's just, he just throws that consistent, you know, ability to run into his stock. He's been brilliant. Um, he's had some really nice winners of late too, out of I'd say modest mares. He hasn't got big numbers. He's had 17 runners in his first crop, which is three-year-olds. But those uh, 17 horses have won over 650,000. So he's averaging average earnings of nearly 40,000. I think Written Tycoon's three-year-old average earnings are 30. Reduced Choices are 45. So, you know, when you compare him against some of the best stallions in Australia, he's actually going really, really well. There's several of his uh, better types, Amber D, Modulate. Avanti Rose, I am Dexter, Dexter Lation, they've all won four, four plus races. I started buying horses here in 2005 and I bought the second most yearlings I bought apart from Yarraman Park in the Hunter Valley which is one of our great studs from Cornerstone and every horse I bought here of racing, of, of racing age has got to the races and all, all but one of them's won. So I mean it's a bit like the fox going down to the chicken coop, if it keeps getting a chicken <laughs> you'll keep coming back and we keep buying winners. They're sound horses, they've got good bone, they're well reared. I mean, it's a beautiful property, and it's a property that's been producing winners for 50 years. So it's, it's not it's not new. They've been fantastic breeders. I mean, I bought Pitt Street from here, who was a very very good horse that won in Sydney and Melbourne and won three country cups. Uh, Hussey's Glow won in South Australia a few weeks ago and was placed at Flemington on a couple of weeks ago. I bought her here, and she stakes placed uh, our NetBank, who won last prep for for me up in Brisbane with Tony Gollan. I bought it here. So it's been a really successful uh, association with with Sam and I think he does a fabulous job. I'm really uh, impressed with the South Australian breeders. I mean, they take their best yearlings to the sale generally, and, and their sale here in South Australia is supported by them, and, and, and they're proud of their product. And of course, we didn't see Free Eagle here today, but we know that this horse, with the, the cross, the Frankel, Tiafilo, it's that Saddler's Wells, Dane Hill cross by Has Chaparral. You know, his weanlings have met really, really well with some great buyer support at the sales so far, and, and you are impressed with them too. I like the Four Eagles. I mean, uh, he, he, he offers something that's a bit different to the Australian market. I mean, Teofilo is a very successful horse here, and, and there's no reason why Four Eagle. He was a great racehorse, and, uh, and his winglings were nice, and he does offer that cross, which works so well everywhere, but uh, it gives the, the breeders here in South Australia something that's a little bit different to what, the, what, they, what they've been offered in the past. And in your role on the board of South Australian Thoroughbred Breeders, I guess it's, it's a big thing within South Australia to upgrade the broodmare band in the state, isn't it? We've had some great new investment in the industry in the last sort of 10 years. So Darren Thomas has seen more bloodstock. You know, he'd own some of, some of the nicest broodmares in the country, you know, well-credentialed mares. Mill Park's always there uh, and they're great base of clients. And we've probably bought 25 to 30 mares just in the last 12 to 18 months ourselves. We've got a couple of really exciting new clients that are investing uh, in South Australia with us, alongside us. At Carnival, I think it's nearly an eight week period where every race on a Saturday is a 100,000 and um, it's great. Betting turnover has been really good as a result. And I guess just finally too, you know, you'd be so proud. Yourself, David, the entire family, you know, it's going down through generations now too. C.S. Hay is now a legend in the Australian Racing Hall of Fame. I mean, that was just fabulous. Only a couple of months ago for the whole family. Yeah, it was. It was a really nice surprise. I, I don't suppose you think about that sort of stuff too much, but when it happens, it's, it's really nice. And um, that recognition and to see the names he, uh, he's alongside is, um, yeah, it's very humbling and um, it was a very nice thing for the family. Yeah, and I think he'd be very proud of what you're doing here, continuing this legacy that he set up here on this amazing property. Oh, I hope so. We love it. I mean, we love living in the Brossa. We love uh, breeding horses. We love the thrill of, of um, trying to produce something that could win on those big, big race days. And, uh, and it is a passion, and it's a passion that we're really proud to be pursuing, and we feel very fortunate that we can do that. Mm -hmm.